In this lesson, we're going to add a camera to a path that we've created. So we want to go ahead and select a camera and select free and just go ahead and drop it in on the left hand side on the view. And you want to right click and move it to the beginning of your camera path in the top view. And then you want to go ahead to the motion for motion control and you want to be on the top and you want to select position position and the assigned controller select the question mark and we're going to put this on a path so we say path constraint okay then we're going to come down and do two things we're going to add path and follow Go ahead and select your path. All right, so I have already done this. If you come down to the bottom, it defaults to 100. 30 frames per, per second is pretty average. And typically, the more of a path you have, the longer you want to do. The only downside is that it is a large file when you render it. Now, if I would select a quarter, it would go quarter speed. Let's push OK. Now the other thing I'd probably want to do is select my camera. All right. And go to the modify. Now typically we see at about a 35 millimeter is, is what the eye is. Most cameras are 35 millimeter. But 35 millimeter is not great for interior shots. So you have 12, 20 millimeter. Let's go ahead and select 35 millimeter. And there's all sorts of little neat features you can do here. Let's go ahead and try that though. So when you come into perspective view here, go ahead and select views and hit camera. Or you can just type C on your keyboard and it'll show you a list of cameras. And then go ahead and push play and we're just going to test it out. So why don't I make this a full screen here. And I'm going to push play. All right, this is going quarter frame. I can speed this up if I want. All right. So the real critical element here is that it goes up the stairs. Now hopefully you have your house with more items than I do. All right, so if you are not, if your camera does not look forward in the direction you're going, you did not select the path direction on the bottom of the motion. All right, so I'm able to go up the stairs and then tour the front of the house. Okay, so once that is completed, let's look at these three views again and let's go to perspective view alright so go ahead and select your camera if you want to make any modifications on the camera select the camera make whatever modifications one of the, the um, interesting elements you can do on the motion control is you can do so the camera will uh, bank as it goes around a corner. So go to the bottom and you'll see it says bank. And there's a lot of other things you can do. You can change the smoothness. You can do have it go backwards all in these controls. Only difference here is when it goes around a corner It'll actually bank like a helicopter might or a plane. It may make you a little seasick, but there are some interesting features you can do. And then when you're ready to go ahead and render it, you want to go ahead and go render. Now it depends on how much time you have to render this. Um, we have a thousand frames, so I would select a thousand. If I just wanted a portion, I could do a hundred. And this 
depending on how, how large it is, you may want to go ahead and for the first time just do a little sample of it, pick a small frame, and select your files. You're going to go probably to the server, but it's important that you pick a movie file. There are a number of different formats. AVI is a typical format. If you would put a JPEG, you would just get a lot of individual frames. So let's go ahead and select AVI file and then save, save your camera, your movie, what you want to call it. So I'll call this Brick House Movie. Save. Now you generally want to compress something like this because they're very large files. Now you don't want to go too much because the more compression you do, the less image. However, you don't necessarily need a hundred. You say okay. Now you can render it quick render or when you when you're already go ahead and hit render when you're all ready to go. And make sure that the camera one is selected. Now that is the end of the exercise. So you want to do some test renderings and, and see what happens. Now what I recommend you do is if you go ahead and do a render prior to rendering it, save your file, do a save, and you can always open another 3ds Max so you can reopen it as another version as this is rendering and you can play around with it otherwise you will be waiting endlessly. So go ahead and press render and then you can see the preview and if it's going to take a long time go ahead and open up 3ds Max again, open up the file which you've saved and you can add some textures or some additional lighting. And that is the end of the exercise.